So you've just bought Shadow. And if not, why not? Uh, links in the description below. Get ten pounds, dollars, or euros off your first month subscription. I'll wait. So now you've got Shadow. You've got an entire world of graphically intense gaming at your fingertips. What do you do next? Uh, number one, probably figure out when you're going to eat, sleep and shower in between all these games. And number two, maybe you decide to start making some content like some of your favourite YouTubers. And maybe that includes streaming games to services like YouTube, Twitch, Mixer or DLive. You know that weird PewDiePie one with the cryptocurrency? I don't know. So a few people had asked me to make this video, but as more of a video content creator, I wanted to get to grips with streaming first before trying to throw out advice. Uh, I feel like I've now done that. I'm live on YouTube every Friday around about 8.30, mark your calendars, and I stream exclusively on Shadow. So in this video, we're gonna run through everything you need to know to stream through Shadow. Uh, it's not necessarily gonna be a how to stream video because there's a million of those on the internet, how to set up your streams, how to set up the broadcasting software, all of that. But all of the things you need to know specifically for doing that through Shadow, we're going to try and cover off in this video. So first off, before we even talk about streaming, uh, let's talk about the performance of your Shadow. You want to get that right before you start showing off games to the world. An important area of that is to do with the bandwidth. Now, this is an area that generates a lot of questions, but luckily, if you are on the Shadow Beta app or you're using a device like the Shadow Ghost, you've got this handy feature here, the Auto Bandwidth Detection. Uh, as the name suggests, it is in beta, but essentially turning this on, it will check your internet speeds to the quality and try to adjust the bandwidth to just that right amount. Uh, with this one, it's essentially a balancing act. If you set the bandwidth too low, you're essentially throttling the shadow streaming service uh, to your device and you'll end up with like pixelation and some jumpy cuts. Whereas if you set it too high, you're essentially trying to smash all that data through at once, which can lead to uh, packet losses, data spikes, massive input lag. Uh, there's a temptation here to set the bandwidth as high as possible to get the best performance. No, that's not how this works. So your bandwidth is set and your shadow is running as smooth as community manager Drew's pickup lines. Next step is to get some games. Now I'm only saying this because I've been asked a few times to just to clarify. With Shadow you get a blank version of Windows for you to then do whatever you want. It's essentially your system from then. You install and buy your own games. It doesn't come with games. I shocked at how many times I've had to clarify this. It doesn't come preloaded with games, that's weird. So you go out and you get your own games. Obviously things like Steam, if you were using an existing PC or something and you want to bring them all over, install Steam, all your games are there. I hate to help with their world domination, but Epic Game Store, you know, a lot of games are going that way now. And you know what, they do give away like a free indie title every week, especially if you're thinking of streaming. Uh, I'd recommend trying something like indie games to try and get like a, a niche in your stream to, to build up an audience. I'm just going to say it right now, you're never going to make it by streaming Fortnite or Apex Legends. It's just too much competition. It's been around for too long. You've got your big names. It's not going to work. And then obviously there's the vast majority of free games which are out there on the internet. Go give them a try. If there's any that you wanted me to try, as I said, uh, we play games here on the channel or I stream every Friday. If you have a suggestion for any games that you'd like me to try on Shadow, you haven't bought it yet, uh, you're waiting to see if this game runs okay, drop it in the comments down below. I'll, I'll maybe give it a go on a stream. So you've got your Shadow. It's running smooth and you've picked a game that you want to play. Next, we need to talk about broadcasting software. How are you going to get that gameplay out into the world? And then there's two different ways of doing this depending on your setup and I'm going to try and cover them both. Essentially, you've got the people who are using Shadow as an app on an existing machine. So a PC, a laptop, and it's running as the app. And then you've got the people who are using a dedicated device like the Shadow Box or the Shadow Ghost who are running everything through Shadow. So let's jump into my desktop. Let's talk about that broadcasting software uh, and the one, the most popular one out there, the one that I use and the one that I recommend, the one that's given me no issues on Shadow is Streamlabs OBS or Slobs. Now, as I mentioned, this is not a tutorial for how to set up Streamlabs OBS. There is a thousand, thousand, thousands of those on YouTube. This is essentially running through my settings, uh, how I've got mindset and how that allows me to successfully broadcast using Shadow. So we're in Streamlabs. Uh, here's my scenes down here. If you've been part of my live streams on a Friday, you would be familiar with a couple of these. So I've got my starting soon one, just a couple of graphics thrown in there. I've got some intro music set up as well. Intermission screen right here. This is when I need to make a pee pee, basically. Uh, all of these scenes, uh, they're just graphics that I've used for my channel and I've created them as browser sources from a website called player.me. So if you're just getting into this and you need some of these screens, 
player.me, recommend it. I'll leave it in the description down below and you just add it in as a browser source. So any of these types of screens, they're gonna be the same for everyone. It's the actual gameplay one. Mine is labeled as live and it's the sources within here, which will change depending on if you are running Shadow as an app on another machine or if you're using a dedicated device like a box or a ghost. So let's try to cover both of those setups. Essentially, if you're using an existing device, a PC or a laptop to run Shadow on, uh, you may want to run Streamlabs locally on that PC. So that PC is handling Streamlabs and Shadow is just handling your game. Uh, there's a very good reason why you may want to do this and we'll get into that later. But if you run Streamlabs locally, uh, essentially to get your gameplay from Shadow out into the stream, uh, you have two options. If we go over here to sources, we've got display catcher. That is gonna get everything that is on your local device's screen uh, and stick it out through the stream. So if you start the stream, you open up Shadow, you make it full screen, it's gonna show everything that you've got on your screen. Uh, but in the same way, if you tab out and you want to go back to check some, some of the chat, if you want to change the music volume, people will see everything that's on your screen. Now, I don't mind that as much because I don't tab out to change stuff that much. I have a separate device next to me so I can monitor the chat. Um, and sometimes I go off on tangents and things and I like to show people uh, YouTube videos or something that I saw on Twitter. So I like people to be able to see everything that's going on on my screen. Second to that, you've got window capture. Selecting window capture is only gonna show what's going on within the Shadow app. So if you're just running your game on there and you want it to stay on that, choose window capture. And if you tab in and out of your local machine to do all the other stuff, nobody's gonna see it. However, if you're using a dedicated device like the Shadow Box or the Shadow Ghost, uh, window capture is not really an option because you are running Shadow, just Shadow. It's not a window. Uh, which essentially leaves you with two options. You can go display capture, and again, that will show everything that's going on on your shadow. Helpful if you wanna to go to other pages and talk about things, or you could choose game capture, and that is only going to show what's going on within the realms of a game that you've selected. And if you go to your shadow desktop to do anything else, that won't be displayed. Next, let's jump into the settings of Streamlabs. And again, there are a hundred settings in here. There are a million videos of people telling you how to set it up. First, very simply, we're just gonna go into Stream. If you're setting up Slobs for the very first time, it will ask you to log into a service like Twitch or YouTube. Once you've logged in through that, it will actually fill all this page in for you, like your streamer key and everything. Uh, and if you haven't done that, or if you're using something else like Mixer or DLive, you would just go to their website, find your streamer key and stick it in here. Uh, next, we're gonna go to output. Uh, and then for output mode, make sure you've got this on advanced so that we can see all of the options going on here. Uh, and the first thing we're gonna talk about is the encoder. So with the encoder, you've got three options. Uh, first one says software X264. Now that is gonna do the encoding of your stream using Shadow CPU. Now Shadow CPU is an Intel Xeon E5-2667 3.2 gigahertz eight core processor. I mean, that's the one that I've got on, on my Shadow device. Uh, I think the model number of the processor can vary depending on which server you've logged onto that day, um, but the performance should be the same. So it's a good processor. It's not gaming and broadcasting good. So the option that you actually wanna be using is hardware NVENC which is actually NVIDIA encoding. Uh, as the name suggests, it's specially designed for devices which are using an NVIDIA graphics card. And what so happens to be running Shadow, uh, it's an NVIDIA GTX 1080 equivalent. So you're golden. Uh, and then something which came out in the last update for Streamlabs underneath NVENC, you've got NVENC new. Streamlabs have released their own video talk about the benefits of using this, but since swapping to it, I have noticed a benefit uh, basically on frame rate. So I'm gonna just link to their video in the description down below instead of trying to explain it myself. Uh, the next session we have is bitrate, and this is something that dear God people on the internet can argue about this setting until the cows come home. And that's a weird saying, I don't know where the cows went. And I know even in the comments down below, I'm gonna get people saying, no, that's not right, because mine's set to 2500. I think it's like the default when you first load up Streamlabs. So I'll just leave it at, yes, my bitrate is 2,500. I stream through Shadow. I have zero issues with my bitrate being set to 2,500. Zero issues with my stream. It works on Shadow. That's what I'm gonna recommend, uh, but feel free to play around with it. So now you've got Shadow, you've adjusted the bandwidth. It's running great. You've chose a game. You've chose a piece of broadcasting software. You've been in, you've changed those settings and you're ready to go live, almost. One more thing we're gonna cover, uh, 
whenever going live, there's certain peripherals that you may need as well. So let's just talk about those peripherals and how they work with Shadow. Now the good news is because of Shadow's USB over IP system and the amazing work that the devs do in testing peripherals to make sure that they're supported, uh, there's never been a better time to use a variety of peripherals with Shadow. With one caveat, let's get this out of the way, it's a question I get asked a lot uh, and you may have even noticed in my streams, there's no webcam and there's a reason for that. So let's say you're using an existing PC, uh, you plug your webcam into that, the journey essentially looks like the image from the webcam into your PC, out through your ISP, into the internet. Nice and simple. But then let's say you're using something like the Ghost or the Box, and as massive advocates of those as I am, because they're great devices, the journey then looks like the image into the webcam, into the Shadow Box or Shadow Ghost, which then needs to be uploaded from your ISP up to the Shadow Virtual Machine, then through the internet, out into the world. Uh, and it's that extra step, something which my own upload speed from my ISP is only 20 meg. Uh, something that we struggle with in the UK, and I know a lot of countries like Switzerland are probably going to laugh at, uh, that's not quite enough to get that image smoothly out into the stream. Uh, I have tested it with just like a, a budget webcam, and I kind of get one frame per minute. Uh, it's not to say that it's impossible. As I said, my upload speed is not great, and I do know people that do use the Shadow Box or the Shadow Ghost, and they plug in a webcam, and they don't have any issues. And that's because of two contributing factors. One, their upload speed may be vastly better than mine. Uh, and two, there's a couple of things that you can do to change that within Streamlabs OBS. Uh, if you add your webcam as a source in OBS, it's a video capture device. You can then go into the settings of that and there's a few things you can change. The resolution, if you make this smaller and turn it down, uh, you'll have less issues. And the frame rate, if you're not asking that much from the frame rate and you turn that down as well, then you may have less issues using a webcam. Unfortunately, this is just one of those things which will be different for almost every single person depending on their ISP provider, their home internet. Uh, if you're using the Shadow Box or the Shadow Ghost and you wanted to give this a go, I would recommend buying a cheap webcam first to give this a test just in case your internet isn't up for it. So everything's up and running and you've made that decision of whether or not you're able to use a webcam or not. Next thing, people got to be able to hear your voice. Uh, let's talk about microphones uh, and again not much of an issue with these whether you're using uh, existing device, the box, the ghost, whether you want to use a microphone with a 3.5mm jack, um, although for streaming what I'd really recommend is a USB condenser mic such as this one. This is the M Drill one by Fronmax. I've done a review of this one on the channel. I'll link that in the description below and probably leave it up here somewhere as well. So if you've plugged in your microphone but you're having issues, uh, there's three quick tips that I would recommend. Number one, if we just go to sound settings down here, uh, if you haven't been able to get it to work at all, uh, just make sure that the microphone source is set correctly because there's a few which show up in here, one of them being the shadow virtual device. That's not a thing, it's virtual as it says. So make sure you've got your device actually selected. Uh, number two, just make sure that all of the audio drivers are up to date on your Shadow by running the standard Windows updates. And if you have any drivers for your specific device, just go to their website and make sure you have the most up to date ones. And lastly, if you've been able to get it connected, but the sound is a bit off, uh, it goes back to our first step, which is bandwidth uh, can massively impact things like input devices as well. So go back, change the bandwidth settings and you should be fine. But if you are having issues with anything we've discussed in this video, uh, what I would recommend is joining the Shadow Discord. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below for the US and the UK channel. Uh, and any questions you have, drop them in the community help. Uh, but seriously, I've never been part of a more friendly community, whether it's the moderators or just the actual community themselves. There's always people around on the Discord who are going to be able to offer advice. Chances are, if there are a setting or a peripheral which you're struggling with, somebody's had that issue before and somebody has the answer. So that should be everything and you're ready to go live. So as I mentioned, relatively high level, although I feel like this has been somewhat of a long video. So not a tutorial of how to set up everything to go streaming, but specifically those settings that you may need to know about for if you're using Shadow. Uh, if you did have a question that I wasn't able to cover in this video, feel free to leave it in the comments down below and I'll try and get back to you. But other than that, if you enjoyed the video and you found it particularly helpful, a thumbs up would be appreciated. If you haven't already, remember to subscribe to the channel and smash that bell button. Um, basically all the things down there that will help small channels such as myself beat the YouTube algorithm. Remember that I'm live on Shadow playing games every Friday here on the channel, so if you had a question and you just wanted to ask me directly or come hang out, be sure to check out the streams. But as always, I shall see you in the next one.